Hi there again. Um, I put this up on one of my previous videos. Um, reason to put it up again is that I checked up on Google. There's several sites out up there. Uh, vintage valves and tubes. And uh, the one that I went on was very, very good. Because all you have to do is put the number in starting with a 2 and you fit the C in then you run down a list for the numbers 43 anyway it turned up and it was manufactured in 1945 I would have been one years old then and um, it's a high frequency triode they call it a lighthouse tube or valve because it looks vaguely <laughs> like a lighthouse. That's the uh, actual American terminology. It's the American tube. It's made by GE. That's, that's the American GE. And they show a picture of it on that site and it's exactly the same valve. So I thought I'd, I'd re-mention it. So if anyone's got an unusual tube or valve. Um, there's websites out there and you'll be able to find out exactly what they are. Now what we're talking about valves, I've got another one here. I don't know if there's a number on it. Yes, there we are. There is a number. I haven't looked this one up. I should do. I don't know whether that's going to show up. looks like VR135 that's the important thing that's the number VR135 anyway it's got two top caps I don't know why they've got two because they're both connected to the same anode you've got the anode or plate the English call them anodes the Americans call them plates I was interested you know the first thermionic valve was invented by Mr. Fleming in England. It just consisted of a heater and an anode. Later in America De Forest fitted in a grid so the valve or I try to think a thermion tube he gave it a special name and it was able to amplify this one here looks like a triode look very carefully you'll see the grid in the middle it's all relied on the Edison effect which Edison himself didn't take up he ignored it but fortunately others did take it up and through Fleming and De Forest you had valves. Now they're more or less taken over by transistors but I'm sure some equipment still uses valves and high quality amplifiers they still use valves. People will say that they can tell the difference in sound. Anyhow, while we're talking about this a lot of you might have wondered why they were always silvery. Sometimes the silver used to cover the entire glass. Here it just shows the bottom. We look inside and turn the light on. Look inside you'll see a little metal enclosure well that metal holds a chemical and it's called a getter and when the valves were evacuated this little item they would fire it. it would fire by high frequency electric so the tube itself was all sealed up but from external sources using high frequencies you could fire the chemical inside which lit 
and flared up, removing the last traces of oxygen, and that is known as a getter. And most, oh my God, sorry. She will not let me alone. Get down, come on, get down. I do apologize. She's been fed. She's a greedy girl. Right. Anyhow, if I'm allowed to, I will show the last three. These are not valves, in fact. They are photocells. The biggest one, Osram photocell. Uh, this is the English, is um, the English Osram. And I'm still being interrupted by a pussy cat. These would have been used to detect light and in some instances if I remember rightly they would be used looking in into a furnace. The furnace would obviously be a light with flames. Well if it went out it would alter the characteristic of this tube photocell and bring up an alarm. So that's a photo. So I think they use cadmium. I'm not 100% sure or selenium. There's a couple of other small ones before I'm taken over by a very fat pussy cat. Two more on my hands. And I'm going to chase her down because you're not with stuff flying. Come down, you get. You're not with stuff flying. I don't want you to do that. There are the, the, the last two. So they're photo cells. Anyhow, thanks once again. Sorry the video got interrupted by a, a somewhat fat pussy cat who's always after food and is extremely friendly. So thanks. Now, any comments please make. Um, as I say, a lot of these things, well, all of these are things of the past and um, almost museum pieces. So once again, thanks. Remember that uh, there is a website on the on Google, uh, vintage. I think it's called vintage valves and tubes. But you'll find if you if you put up vintage valves and tubes, it will turn up. And as I say, it's very very handy because it appears to well, it doesn't appear to it. Uh, it has all the numbers and tells you when they were first made, what they were used for. Very interesting, it's very unusual. Oh, I'm gonna, anyhow, I'm going to clear down. This cat's going to wreck the place. Anyhow, thanks again. Thank you.